Hey guys, Books Nelson here with another breakdown of a new collection that we are mostly locked out of here in 2K24, my team. Let's get right into the content. So a lot of new cards today, a lot of new cards, more cards than normal. Uh, most cards you've ever seen. I don't know why there's so many cards today. But um, yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's funny. And I'm, I'm not going to rant about the situation in the game in this video, but we do have some stuff to talk about. That I'll, a, a few things that we'll be having videos on. But for now, let's get right to the content. Um, they said that we would be getting, that most of the cards would be available. In, the, in these collections, increasingly, there have been more unavailable cards than there have been available cards, which is just interesting and funny. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to get right into the content and start breaking these cards down. We're not going to start... From 100 overall Tracy McGrady. Um, so Danilo Gall Gallinari. Now you guys know if you've been rocking with me, um, this channel is focused mostly on SIGs, the information that people don't talk about, because anybody can come here and see if the stats and badges are good. But I will look at, I will highlight those things really more about what you need to put on the card. He's obviously going to need handles for days with an 89 ball handle. Uh, and if you don't know, Handles for Days, at least in my career, speeds up your ball handle as well as giving you the stamina. So the most necessary badge. Because of his size, I would definitely give him Brick Wall, especially for uh, three, Triple Threat. Yeah, handles for Days, Hyper Drive, absolutely super necessary. Shame he can't get Big Driver at his size. Uh, that's unfortunate. But... The card looks pretty good. I will also give him Killer Combos. That's another badge that speeds you up. But Brick Wall, Fast Feet, probably Hyper Drive, Handles for Days, and Killer Combos. Everything else is just a nice to have. Stats look really good. 95 three ball at 610. Plays a small forward position. Very competitive position. But he does have that stick dunk. So depending on his release, this card can be very, very good. It is, it is a normal release timing. Michael Jordan dribble style. Absolutely excellent. Normal signature size up. Now we know from this channel, that's not the best, but it is usable. Absolutely usable. Allen Iverson moving crossovers. Okay. Moving step back. Kemba Walker. That's really interesting. That is a really interesting moving step back and pro behind the back. Yeah, this card seems very, very good, to be honest with you. I think this card, depending on his release, this card could be pretty competitive with that Hito Turka glue. Again, depending on his release. Hito's release is pretty good. People talked about Hito like he was going to have a really garbage release. It's not the best release in the game. Like He's no Michael Beasley, but it's a really good release. Definitely from a speed standpoint and the height of it's fine. Um, and it works well on leaners and stuff like that. Speaking of leaners, he's got normal leaner, which is all right. Not the best. Uh, hop jumper normal one. It's okay. So yeah, this Gallinari is a very, very good card to be in the market. If you're locked out of the Opals, if this card has a good release... I do think this card can compete with most of the Opals. And I would even say, if I had this card, I would definitely give him a look versus the op the free Opals, like your James Worthies and your um, Danny Grangers, and even your Andrew Wigginses. But I'm not saying he's better than those guys. I'm saying he's close enough that if you played with him and you liked his animations more and you liked the jumper more, you might like this card more than those. And that's what we've been looking for all this time is just don't put garbage pink diamonds in here, right? Like don't put cards in here like you're literally trying to antagonize people. Dyson Daniels, okay, giant point guard, 6'7". Great, great, great size. Not a great three-point shot, just in terms of what the other point guards provide. There's a, a lot of the other point guards are excellent shooters. So he's a good shooter. Uh, and I we, we've all played with his emerald if you've been playing the game for a while, if not, definitely a great salary cap budget option. And when I say budget, I mean in a situation where you're trying to bring down an overall, in a situation where you're trying to, you know, for match for matching up and against a computer, you know, doing goals and stuff like that. You get triple threat. Very, very good card for that kind of thing. 85 driving dump, 70 standing. So if you put a shoe on this guy, I would definitely put some into that standing dunk because every attribute, in my experience, over 65 on standing dunk, the standing dunk tendency seems to go up. And standing dunk tendency is one of the most important things in the game if you can standing dunk. And it's clearly obvious you got to dump a bunch of shooting badges into him. 
And you, you guys see all the blank spots and this in there. Let's look at his animations though. Michael Jordan dribble style, all right. Pro signature size up, solid. Pro escape, not the best, but it's fine. Combo moves KD, breakdown moves KD. So he's not the best ball handler in that regard. Um, moving behind the back pro again, solid. His release timing is on quick. That's a W. Yeah, I mean, this car's probably pretty good. Moving step back, Kemba Walker. Um, I can, you know, I keep going thumbs up to that. Let me take my thumbs up back. I got to look at that moving step, step back from Kemba Walker. So unthumbs up, thumbs neutral. I'll take a look at that. And if I get this card, uh, I'm almost certainly going to get this card. And if he's good, I'll definitely do a breakdown on him. Show you guys what he can really do. All right. Tyrus Thomas. 6'9", small forward. You know, if you're not an Opal at 6'9", and you come with and you don't come with Agent 3, I'm a little scared, right? Like, now we're in the territory of your defense has to be astronomically good. His slashing is astronomically good. He's got 95 driving dunk, 90 standing dunk. So this guy gets to the launch pad, and it is over. You're going to see some great animations there. Let's look at, oh, he's got the LeBron James layup package. Whoa, whoa, look at these animations, guys. Whoa, this guy's insane. Hold on, this is a must get card. I say this unironically, this is a must get card. We're gonna compare him to LeBron James. I wanna compare him to the Opal. Oh man, I'm excited about this card. <laughs> if I'm probably gonna buy this card outright if I don't get him from the deluxe pack. I'm, I'm I'm not against locking in these sets because it's really the only way to engage the game, especially if you like the pink diamond cards that are there. There's literally nothing else to do with your MT. If there was a set to lock in, this is looking like a set that you would lock in because the pink diamonds are actually good. And why not? That having been said, um, this is yeah, this is this should be the opal, right? Yeah, that's the opal. Excellent. So let's look at him statistically next to LeBron. He compares actually favorably, except for the three-pointer. That almost seems like the design of the card. Like the card is LeBron James, but without the same level of three-pointer. Because this LeBron, you put a shoe on that three-pointer, it gets into the low 90s, you add a coach. He's basically, from a shooting standpoint, as good as it gets. Throw the badges on there that he needs. Let's look at the badge comparison. And I find this card very, very interesting now. Soon as 2K DB loads. Okay, we'll let that work itself out. Uh, let's say we can actually see the badges without them loading up. So he's obviously missing a ton of these shooting badges. He badge wise, he doesn't compare at all. And he has ankle breaker, and LeBron doesn't have that, which isn't really a factor in the game. I'm just observing that it's there. So badge wise, he's way behind LeBron, except for he comes with Hall of Fame Rise Up. That's a W. Every other, but as a shooter, LeBron is far, far superior. But as a dribbler, this guy's, I mean, Kyrie Irving dribble style is better than LeBron's dribble style, but LeBron dribble style is excellent, right? If you watch my dribble tutorial, I showed a little of his dribble style in that. De'Aaron Fox signature size up, probably top three, four in the game. A Kemba escape, best in the game. Trey on combo moves, I'm not familiar with it off the top of my head. Got to take a look. Pro breakdown moves, uh, I'm not as familiar with that one either. I got to take a look at that. John Wall moving crossover, top three in the game at worst. Uh, moving behind the back pro is pretty good. John Wall step back, best in the game. Penny moving spin, most people call that the best in the game. And Luka moving hesitation, not the best in the game, but you can work with Luka's animations. The moving Hezzy is probably the only thing that's not the best, but because he has Kyrie Irving dribble style, you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, this card is an absolute W. And if you don't have a small forward opal that you really like, that you didn't get either from locking in or one of the free ones, I would go as far as to say to give this guy a shot. I'm not sure what his, anime, what his jump shot looks like, but that Ben Shepard base is one of the best bases in the game, guys. This is actually... Whoa, his jump shot is crazy. This guy, it looks like a hidden opal. Not going to lie. Oh, no, I said it. I said the YouTube phrase. Not going to lie. Minus 10 points. I apologize. That was vulgar of me. Okay, so Alex Caruso. I love Alex Caruso's Ruby. I thought he was one of the best, most slept on cards in the game. He's got that Steph Curry behind the back. Michael Jordan dribble style. Card really moves way better than he has any right to with just those things. 
pro escape normal size up he has, he's mostly the same he's got his jumper on quick yeah i'm gonna go ahead and say and we know a caruso card is absolutely gonna defend badge wise extremely complete extremely complete as a finisher 95 driving dunk whoa this guy might be he might be i don't like to call it and, and you know you guys know if you watch this channel i wait till i play with the cards unironically he might be your best available point guard to buy off the top of my head that you can actually get uh, he might play for me over oscar we got to see we got to see i do like oscar's release better but it is slower so yeah alex caruso this is this is galaxy opal alex caruso they did a great job with this this collection we talked about apology tour this isn't the apology tour because the opals are not in the market but this is definitely they are purposefully making these cards good i don't know if it's because of the negative response of last week or what but this is obviously a shift in philosophy in terms of the pink diamonds in the market all right so um all right, so his jumper solid I, I used his emerald it was pretty good pro dribble style love it kobe escape love it james harden combo moves love it one of the best in the game john wall crossover love it kobe bryant breakdown is not great moving behind the back pro solid moving step back pro not the best this card can really really move at the six seven two guard position let's look at his attributes 85 driving dunk pretty good needs a few badges both in everywhere kind of let's see slashing actually he's good on the slashing badges but he does need that agent three he does need that open looks he does need that mini magician and he needs a shoe and he needs that bailout so he, he it's fine if you're going to invest resources into this card i wouldn't to be honest with you like he's good but i don't know if you don't have the resources i don't think he's so good that if you badge him up he's worth it right i look at the domination of lebron that's a card that if you badge it up i do think he's worth it because lebron's key animations are so good that a lebron card is always going to play well almost no matter what tier he is and I, I don't think that jordan walsh fits into that category although i do think he's a good card and if you don't have any if you have extra resources like badges and stuff then fine, I would do it. Dino, I'm super curious about his animations, and they did the thing a little bit. Hard and step back, not the best. John Wall has he not familiar with it, but Michael Jordan dribble style on a 6'11 with elite movement style. Cade signature size up. Cade size up is all right. I, I think Cade has his size up with Michael Jordan dribble style right now, if I'm not mistaken. Not familiar with Zach Levine's escape. So I got to take a look at this card, but this is another card I'm definitely going to play with donovan mitchell base on quick release timing yeah they and and obviously we know dino raja with the 7-11 wingspan like let's not bury the lead here dino raja has a 7-11 wingspan so um this is always your budget Giannis in my team for the people who are really familiar with the mode you know what to expect pro three leaner not the best the thing about pro three leaner going towards the off ball hand it's awesome going towards the ball hand it's goofy so when you're going towards the ball hand, you want to lean on other options. Unless you're in the mid-range, then you're fine. But if you're at the three-point line, he might run damn near to half court with that pro three leaner, depending on the animation and the angle you're running at. So you can tame it if you work on it. You can get it to be a little better. But ultimately, it is a fit, it's half of a good leaner, is, is what, what I'm saying hop jumper normal is all right so yeah I, I like this card too i mean on the court you might love the card so i'm saying i like this card just looking at his animations let's look at his attributes yeah he's definitely you know affordable Giannis is what this card is because Giannis has been purely locking i think in terms of the good cards right the diamond the pink diamond and then the the gambling card there's actually no way to get a Giannis card without buying a whole bunch of other cards so this looks like they're finally doing it where they're saying okay is your available um off 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 brand Giannis this is we have Giannis at home you do have to badge him up I always recommend agent threes and it's really because agent threes always kicks off if you're doing anything behind the three-point line before you shoot literally if you're if you're thinking about dribbling behind the three-point line before you catch the ball agent threes will pop off so you always want that card as insurance that your three-point rating doesn't get a knock because your player took half of a baby step with his left pinky toe 
And obviously handles for days, absolute must, hyperdrive, absolute must. But yeah, I mean, I have to say, without getting into the philosophy of should you lock in or should you not lock in, should you support this, blah, blah, I'm talking to the people who are engaging the game, that are having fun with the game, that don't want to spend money on the game, don't want to gamble on the game. Is this a set that you should lock in? Absolutely. Because if you're in that state, you probably don't have all of the best cards you want. I think these are really good pink diamonds that are probably fun to play. And that's what I was asking for last week. All right, Zach Randolph. So this is your clutch time reward. And cl clutch time is always still fun, but that's th you are going to see a lot of God squads in clutch time. Because even people who don't gamble, if they get lucky on the opals from deluxe packs, exchange packs, <laughs> they might you they you might see just Will Hakeem, you know, all of the stuff because they, they might not have 10 of those opals, but they're, they're going to have five. So clutch time could be a little wild out there sometimes, at least on my server in the East Coast. But yeah, Zach looks pretty good. It really depends on his animations. Zebo usually has a little bit of a goofy shot, but whoa, he got a little treatment here. Kobe escape. I didn't. Uh, yeah, no, Derek Rose size up is actually excellent. Excellent size up, Derek Rose. Michael Jordan dribbles. In fact, one of my favorite size ups that Derek Rose. Who has that that I um, got into? It was Maxi, Tyrese Maxi. Yeah, that Derek Rose size up has a lot of juice in it. But you gotta, you know, you gotta work on it. Trey Young behind the back. So this is the behind the back that like rushes you moving forward, right? Um, the old speed boost from like 2K1920 behind the back before we had side to side behind the backs. Got LeBron layup packages, layup package. Can he play small forward? He sure can. Wow. This guy looks really good. His main two things are, you know, he's got pro three leaner, so only has half a leaner. And he's got Zach Randolph signature jumper. So we have to see how that plays on quick. Some bases speed up much more than others. So some bases like Michael Jordan, he speeds up, doesn't matter. Jump shot still sucks. Zach Randolph, he might speed up and it might be very good. I have to actually play with the card to see. But this looks like an objectively good reward. It looks like he's a true opal. Let's look at the attributes. Attributes are not out of this world in terms of his driving duck is good enough to get by. His three-pointer is good enough to get by. I definitely want to throw a shoe on there. Hyperdrive, handles for days, absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. Bailout, I would say as well. Space creator, I would say as well, especially because he has only half of a leaner. So when you're going the other way, you're going to want to have the option to step back and still make shots at a very high level. But it doesn't take much to complete this card from a badge standpoint, and he also looks like a very good reward. Hondo. Okay, so the thing about John Havlicek. John Havlicek plays like the best defense in the game. He's like a Kawhi Leonard card in my experience. Even though he's 6'5", and he can't play the one, which a lot of people are not going to like, in my experience, Hondo just plays crazy defense, right? He has that that secret juice that LeBron and Giannis and Kawhi Leonard get. Uh, Gary Payton cards usually get it. So I think he's probably going to be a very good defender on the court. Badge-wise, he looks extraordinarily complete. He has a 90 driving dunk, which is very, very good. We are on next gen here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you don't have to give him any of these badges. Not a single one. Not a single one. I think Aerial Wizard is the biggest waste of time badge in the game because if you have a high, well, at least in my career, if you have a high enough dunk rating to get gold Aerial Wizard, there's no way you need Aerial Wizard. I don't know what the badge does. I think they need to rework it or take it out of the game because it's just a waste of resources. I would prob I would only put Aerial Wizard on a player if they had a low dunk, right? So if he had like a 70 driving dunk, then give him Hall of Fame Aerial Wizard and he can maybe catch lobs if he has the right dunk packages for it. But anyway, that's a tangent on the side. Uh, default swing layup package is very good. Really great dunk pack. Athletic 360s, that's going to look ridiculous. That's going to look extremely silly. I see what part of the year we're in. It's getting warm on the East Coast, and 2K decided to lose their minds. Uh, Curry signature size up. It's all right. But dribble style Kyrie Irving, best in the game. Kemba Walker escape, best in the game. Uh, Kobe combo and breakdown moves, not super great. John Wall moving crossover, top in the game, S tier crossover. Lucas step back. I really like Lucas step back. Most people won't call it an S tier step back. I mean, really, the S tier step backs are John Wall and LeBron. But I think that the Luca is in the A tier of step backs, and you can really work with it. But it's a dribbler step back. It's not really a shot creator step back. It's a step back that allows you to be shifty and create more movement. 
So you, you would get the rest of your stuff, maybe you're behind the back or other areas. So it's not the best full-on retreating move to, to yank people to shoot, but it is a great way to slam the brakes and change directions on people and have a way to change rhythm. I like it very much. He's got Kevin Knox lower base. I'm sorry, former Knicks. Great Kevin Knox. I don't know what your base is in this game, but it is on very quick, so it should be at least pretty good. Kobe Leaner. Yo, if I had a soundboard, I'd be like popping the, you know, Dom DeMarco. Like this, that's crazy, dude. That's crazy. So, and you know what? Don't sleep on the Michael Jordan spin jumper with a different release because we've only seen Michael Jordan's animations with his slow Michael Jordan, you know, bass. So I want to see this with a different bass. This might be better than we think it is. Yeah, this is another big fat W. How do you get this card? It just says season five rewards. I don't remember how you lock this guy in, uh, but I'm sure one of you guys will tell everybody in the comic session. I'll pin that if you guys put that up there. All right, so now we go to the Opals. So Troll Opal, number one, Bradley Beal. And I say Troll Opal because, I mean, Steph Curry dribble style. You got the Aaron Fox signature size up. Pro Escape. This is not an Opal, guys. This is, this, maybe he's very good, right? Maybe he's very good. But I'm telling you right now on paper, he doesn't look very good. Chris Paul moving step back, pro behind the back. This is this is this is giving pink diamond, right? Like he's 6'4. He does have a 6'8 wingspan, which is pretty good. Uh pretty solid for a 6'4 card. He's gonna obviously shoot the lights out. Is that animation on very quick? It is on very quick. So that's great. Animation's on very quick. Uh I just saw something alarming. Sidearm tomahawks, cockback tomahawks. So at least he has front clutches and under the basket regular athletic and straight arms. Okay, so then he has two troll dunk packages and his dunk packages, but two really good ones. He has his own leader, which I think is an all right leaner, if I recall correctly. Uh, Pro 2 hop jumper. I'm actually not familiar with that hop jumper. Gotta take a look at it. But he just doesn't jump off the page as a phenomenal small guard. He looks like a solid small guard. And I say that just because we know what else is in this pack. They, they always throw in a troll card. And I'm not sure if he'll be as fun as Kyrie Irving. Maybe because he does have 65 driving dunk. I just don't know if he has the SIGs to hold up and be quite as fun as the other troll cards. So we'll see. Obviously, if you get Bradley Beal, there's no way to sugarcoat it. That's an L. Lamar Odom, very excited about what he can do. Okay, now. Quick interruption here. When I say very excited about what he can do, I know these are gambling only cards and I'm not trying to promote, obviously not. My, I'm built on basically criticizing 2K for what they're doing. What I'm saying is just looking at what's in the game. This is an educational channel first and foremost, raising the level of conversation. So I wanna break down these cards and be excited about what the card could possibly do. And if you guys get them off the lock-in, and that's the main reason we're covering these, because if you guys are locked, a lot of people are locking in sets, and a lot of people are getting, almost everyone's getting those deluxe packs. If you're getting deluxe packs and locking in sets, you you might, or definitely will wind up with one of these cards. And I don't want to just pretend that the card doesn't exist. I think we can all be mature enough to criticize 2K, to not spend money on the game, to promote not spending money on the game, to do things like I say, and promote doing things that show 2K that we don't like what they're doing right now, while also just looking at what the cards can do. I think we can all be grown up enough to do that. And in that sense, ooh, Lamar Odom, no, I'm kidding. All right, so pro Kobe dribble style, excellent. Jamal Murray signature size is actually a very good one. Very, very good one. I actually like this a lot. Uh, Durant escape is very good. Booker combo moves, don't remember it off the top of my head because all I do with Booker is uh, whoop, go side to side and shoot a leaner like everybody else. Uh, pro breakdown, I like a lot. Moving crossover, Allen Iverson. So when you're running, it's not the it's not the best. Like he does, he's, he's like very to the side, but it's useful. It's particularly useful if you have something like the Trey Young behind the back that's really good at moving you forward, right? So the Trey Young behind the back is going to launch you forward. Now Allen Iverson moving crossover is going to launch you to the side, and that's great. You guys see, he has he has dunk packages that aren't even in the game, right? Like they ran out of space, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, moving step back pro is okay. Another Doncic Hezzy, not my favorite. Lena Pro 2, also fantastic. Um, he's definitely, he looks like one of the best small forwards in the game. Lower base Lamar Odom on very quick, so we got to see what that looks like. But I'm sure it's fine. 
we look at his badges he is pretty complete gotta give him that open looks outside of open looks uh he has everything he needs except he's not a pure defensive card he doesn't have that immovable but yeah i think lamar odom for most people probably starts right uh, even if you went in for something like that sean marion or something like that i would i would say you might want to give this lamar odom a look and see what's going on uh, he's not quite as super duper elite with the six but he has enough really good sigs with this 610 frame we know lamar odom always feels like a good build on the court 93 three-point rating so that obviously with a shoot that goes to 97 so he's an elite three-point shooter from an attribute standpoint 95 driving dunk with every dunk package in the game i will say this as a lamar odom fan right so guys i'm from queens new york right so i'm a lamar odom fan and i don't understand why if you're juicing lamar odom he's not a better ball handler than he is a dunker because Lamar Odom wasn't a bad dunker. I think he had a mean one on Kenyon Martin versus the Nuggets. But his thing was that at his size, he was one of the first guys to have a really smooth handle. You know, it was just uncanny. And the thing was, everybody knew that if Lamar Odom really focused on the game and, and just quick story time, I'm very close with someone who went to school with Lamar Odom and we know what Lamar Odom's been through. When he was in school, you talk about a dude that literally did nothing but smoke weed. So basically, and this was like a known, you know, one of those worst kept secret things. If Lamar Odom really, really focused on the game, he could have definitely been one of the absolute greats because all he needed to do was tighten up his jump shot and be in the gym working on his body. And he would have been crazy because his handle, his feel for the game, his passing, he had the gifts of a hall of famer and he still you know wound up being one of those as close as you can get to being an all-star guys you know two-time nba champion very well deserved he helped very much on those lakers teams so you know he still turned out to be a very good player but he could have been a great player if his head was truly in the game but his main attribute was the dribbling and i would think if you're juicing lamar odom you'd give him the tim thomas of yesteryear treatment above anything else but yeah uh, lamar odom looks very very good Definite dub. And if you're a Lakers fan or, or, or you know, New York or you're a Lamar Odom fan, uh, he looks like he'll satisfy. Pal Gasol. Very, very curious about Pal Gasol. So he's got 87 speed. And I actually haven't been looking at the speed of these cars. 92 speed on Lamar Odom. Um, 87 speed, which is solid for a seven footer. I mean, I shouldn't say solid. It's good for a seven footer. You throw a shoe on, he's in the 90s. He should be fine. He should move just fine. 94 strength is excellent. 93 point shot. Very good. Not necessarily elite. I remember his jumper being really slow. So that's going to have to speed up a lot, if my memory is correct. Dribble style. He is a good dribbler for his size. <laughs> but and he has Nikola Jokic's hop jumper. See, this changes everything. And this is why in the dribble tutorial, we talk about your moves. Your, your most important dribble move is what leads into your most important shot, basically. Right. And in the form of him. This hop jumper, Nicole, this Nikola Jokic hop jumper is going to be one of his most important shots because this is the thing that separates him from other seven foot footers who are like okay at dribbling. That's what does it. I think you can basically do what you do with Jokic and cheese into the hop jumper. I don't know, I say cheese, but you know, dribble into the hop jumper and you can get some good stuff off with this card. I think this card is pretty good. He doesn't look super duper amazing, but he looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to compare him real quick to. A team. I want to see what they look like side by side. So, so he just looks like worse Hakeem in a lot of ways because he, he's minus in almost every stat. He does have a better wingspan than Hakeem, animation wise. Uh, dribble style, I honestly probably like Kobe better than Michael Jordan. Size up, I, I'm still not familiar with Tracy's. Common moves, Jordan Poole versus Paul. These are both good. Yeah, he's really, really close. <laughs> these cards, are, it's it's really funny that these cards are so close. Except this guy has a cheese double. They both have the hop jumper. So yeah, this is Diet Hakeem, basically. Uh, which, I mean, listen, Hakeem is fantastic. So Powell's probably fantastic as well. Iggy. Uh, so we know he's going to be a fantastic defender, right? Because Iggy cards are in that group. That always defend really well. 
is a Galaxy Opal with an 87 mid range. This is a. Mm. I'm not going to go as far as to call him a troll card because I actually really like Diamond Iguodala a lot. That was a card that I thought was really slept on. He was just such an amazing slasher. I think he had Michael Jordan dribble style when he came out. Now he's got Kemba Escape. Woo! All right. James Harden behind the back. Yeah, Iggy's fantastic. He's definitely not a troll card. Release one very quick. Pro leaner. Yeah, I think he's um he's probably in that top five category for shooting guards. I just think you 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 have to put a shooting shoe on him. You gotta get these attributes up so that he can perform at the level of these other cards. And you definitely want to put on Hall of Fame Agent 3 if you have it, Hall of Fame Blinders if you have it. Other than that, he's good as far as badges go. Uh come on, man. Can we can we get rid of this? Who's doing this? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so so in in this one, he has the Agent 3. But yeah, so Hall of Fame Agent 3, definitely going to throw that dead eye on there. Other than that, he's really complete from a badge standpoint, he, so he's not going to drain your resources. And that's one thing I'll say about card reviews. I'm not calling anybody out, but I think, you know, talking about ele elevating the conversation, we need to stop saying if you throw badges on this card. People don't have infinite badges. If you throw badges on every card, then you have no badges, right? So it matters that cards are resource intensive, that they require badges from you. I would say less so because there's a lot more shoes in the game, but it still does matter. If you put a shoe on every card you have, eventually you run out of shoes, you run out of good shoe boosts. So it matters when cards you know, require resources. And I think something we should acknowledge when we're doing these breakdowns. So I'm acknowledging it. But yeah, defensively, he's going to be outstanding. So everything's happening with that caveat. He's not the biggest, but he's got a 6'11 wingspan, which I think makes up for the 6'6 height. I would venture to say, I don't think he's going to struggle to defend anybody, even if someone's got a really tall two guard like Tracy or Franz Wagner. I think with his speed and his wingspan, he should be fine defending on virtually a switch all because he's got a 91 strength i'd probably throw that shoe on him as well just go ahead and juice the shooting and, and and all of his athleticism because he's really complete as a dunker really complete as a ball handler so yeah this card has some serious potential he's not going to be in the category of ron artest in my opinion ron artest is still uh and we'll take i mean Tracy's 100 overall, so to me, he doesn't even count because the odds are just so low that almost no one's going to get him. But Ron is, I think, the best two guard in the game. I think Kobe is in the same class as Ron, just not quite as good. But Kobe's very, very, very good because, you know, because of Kobe. But yeah, I, I don't think he's in that category. Kobe's been the best two guard in this game for. I mean, basically all year almost, like, like except for the Brandon Roy season. Kobe's been the best two guard in the game since he came out, and his Ruby was fire. His Amethyst is one of the best Amethyst two guards, right, without the Shaq duo. So, yeah, so it's Kobe and Ron. I don't think he cracks that, but I do think he's in that next group, and he might even be at the top of that next group. So I, I'm liking this Iguodala card. This is definitely not an L if you get it, unless you're already running Kobe and Ron Artest. If you're if you're not running Kobe and Ron and you wind up with this card, I think you're probably in pretty good shape and pretty happy with it. Pascal Siakam. So on a personal note, I hate this guy's jumper. I just hate it so much. <laughs> it's just so hard for me to see. Like I remember getting that diamond in that in, in the duo and I just couldn't use it. I couldn't use the duo because I couldn't get his jumper cue down at the time. Maybe now I've been playing the game a lot more. I'll be better at it. But I'm not in love with the Pascal Siakam upper. Now it's on very quick, and he'll have better stats, so that might make it a little easier to work with. So aside from my personal complaining, let's look at the card. Michael Jordan dribble style, Darius Garland size up. Okay, upon exploration, don't love that size up. Trey Young escape, absolutely fantastic, one of the best in the game. Jimmy moving step back is okay. Uh, Kevin Durant hezzy, actually like a lot. Giannis crossovers are right, so he's gonna be pretty good. Normal leaner. Not the best. Great dunk packages. Long athlete layup package, which is also very good. Yeah, he looks he looks like a, another solid small forward added to the game. Very, very congested position. I just don't know if he's doing anything special to add to that group. I don't like I put him in with the, the worthies and that stuff like that. Like he's gonna move better than worthy because he has the tray escape. So he has a little bit more juice in, in as far as that goes. But if you like Worthy's jumper more than, pa than Pascal Siakam's jumper, there's no way you play this card. I would actually say um, if you go, if we go back and look at this Tyrus Thomas, 
from a SIGs standpoint, this Tyrus Thomas is wild, right? Like he's wild. And if you like his jumper and his SIGs over Pascal Siakam, I would go as far as to say that Tyrus Thomas will be better for you than Pascal Siakam. I'm not saying he's better on paper. And then we have to see how the cards perform defensively because I do expect him to perform very well defensively because we cannot break down this card without looking at that 7-3 wingspan. Wow. Tremendous wingspan. So, yeah, Pascal Siakam looks good. Um, probably in the second tier of small forwards. Dwayne Wade. Um, so, Dwayne Wade, there's only one thing that matters with Dwayne Wade because Dwayne Wade's a good card, except for one thing, and that's that he can't shoot at the highest level. He's got Pro Tool Leaner, which is fantastic. Uh, his hop jumper's okay. Not, not, not super great, to be honest with you. But that jumper, Dwayne Wade would have been ruling the game if he had a better jump shot already. His diamond was fantastic. It was just at a time when cars were slow enough that you can get away with a jumper that slow. Now you can see they juiced him from a movement standpoint with the Trey Young escape, Michael dribble style, elite motion style. James Harden combo moves, one of the best combo moves in the game, if not the best combo moves in the game. It can crab people automatically, John Wall crossover. So except for the fact that he doesn't have an elite step back and elite behind the back, which does matter, it does matter. But the fact that Dwayne Wade is going to play defense way above his head with that 6'10 wingspan on the 6'4 frame, people always look at the height, but wingspan absolutely matters in this game. It's a big deal. And that 6'10 wingspan, if you look, we've had cards with 6'8 wingspans that have been taller. So, you know, as they say in real life basketball, you guard with your hands, not with the top of your head. So that wingspan matters. And you know slashing, he's elite. Defense, probably elite. In fact, there's one attribute I want to look at. Well, he probably has very, very high. Where is it? 90. Oh, 97 block. What does he have defensively to go with that? And Hall of Fame anchor. I do not think height is an issue. With 212 pound, 6'10 wingspan, half anchor, 97 block, 98 vert Dwayne Wade. In fact, I would go as far as to say, for me personally, if Dwayne Wade... If his jumper is fast enough, he would probably be my personal favorite point guard in the game. Just because I love the way he blocks and, and slashes. I just love it. Absolutely love it. And with the Pro 2 leaner, that's enough. I mean, his leaners are already pretty good. So so that, I, I will say that with, the very, with his shot on very quick, his leaner game should be there. And that means we have to look at his three-point game, 95 three-pointer. Um, and let's look at these current badges. And he has Hall of Fame Agent 3, which isn't loaded up for some reason, but trust me. So he has Hall of Fame Agent 3. Really a shame they didn't give him Hoff and Movable Enforcer. He's one of the best defensive, one of the best two-way guards to ever live. In fact, I mean, I guess he, he would be the third best, right? He's the third best two-guard, and he's also the third best two-way guard because Kobe and Michael were also better overall two-way players. But, I mean, you could make an argument that Dwayne Wade's defense is is in the conversation with Kobe's and yeah I think he should have gotten a movable enforcer uh he's always been one of the strongest guards in the game and they should have they should have blessed him with that but that having been said he should stand and dunk just fine at 6'4 with that wingspan and yeah yeah the Dwayne Wade looks amazing not an L not a troll I don't think his height will make the card bad in any way 99 speed I'm, you know, it's just, this is a card where it's a shame that he's not in the market because he's not the best point guard that's going to be Cade. He might be in the second best category, for sure. He might be in that second best category if his jumper is fast enough. But it's just more of the fun. You know, I want the fun of using a Dwayne Wade card, and you're not letting me have it. Brandon Roy, the former best two guard in the game, in the early game. Let's see what he's talking about. D-book dribble style, pretty good. Pro escape, okay. Steph Curry moving step backs, good. I'm not familiar with Michael's moving crossover, although Michael does have some of the best dribbles in the game as a total card. I just haven't looked specifically at his crossover in a while. d row size up is also good. As a dribbler, he's all right. Pro escape at this level, and when, you want, when you're looking at Brandon Roy, who's usually going to be one of the best in the game, I do not think Brandon Roy, even though he's a dark matter, I, I don't think he's one of the best. Let me rephrase this. I don't think he's one of the best in terms of the very, very best. I don't think he eclipses Ron Artest. That's what I'm saying. 
and he's a dark matter. So yeah, it says he's a dark matter, but I would be very surprised, and I'm ready to be wrong, if he's better than Ron Artest. And it's just because he just doesn't have enough of the elite SIGs to also be elite at shot creation. Shot making, yes, he should be very, very elite at shot making. I'm not saying he's not an elite card, but he's coming in with the dark matter glow, and we want to know if he lives up to that. And he's 6'7", so he's shorter than Ron. 6'8", wingspan, not impressive at his size. And, you know, he should be great at shooting. D-book leaner, massive W. Normal two hop jumper, you guys know, one of my favorite hop jumpers in the game because it works in every direction. Uh, you can see my breakdowns for that. Excellent dunk pack. I mean, again, same thing. They gave him every dunk package in the game. Kyrie Irving layup package, actually not my favorite layup package. Kyrie Irving plays with the ball a little bit too much. So I don't think... I don't think Kyrie is an elite layup package. It definitely has a lot of animations you want to stay away from. There are there are good animations in there, don't get me wrong, but there are also troll animations that will get you blocked and move you into the defender, and you have to really work with the layup package to make sure you never do those things. Um, so yeah, so yeah, Brandon Roy looks pretty good. Even the attributes, like it almost feels like they're lying. This feels a lot more like a pink diamond card. I'm, maybe I'm wrong, guys. Guys, if I'm crazy, let me know. And, and I'm saying this. As a shooter and as a dunker, he's absolutely elite. But from a stats and uh, from an attributes and animation standpoint, he's good. Right? Not great, but good. He's 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 got, you know, I mean, again, 96 speed. Athletically, he's there. 91 is there. 97 three-pointers. That's all good. 80, 89 interior is great. 88 blocks, good. You know, so he's, he's, he's great. He looks but 85 standard dunk is good. So, yeah, he looks good. He looks good. Brandon Roy looks good. I'm not overwhelmed by Brandon Roy, but he looks good. Ugh. All right. <laughs> all right. What do they do? Michael Jordan dribble style. T-Mac T size up. Okay, they didn't go totally nuts. They didn't go totally nuts. Obviously, listen. I as we speak, I'm using Pink Diamond Wembenyama off my bench. So obviously, the card's going to be good because Pink Diamond still plays on most people's teams. In fact, I think he's the center I see the most in the game. Is Pink Diamond Wemby? Um, he's the most common center in the game right now. So this is going to be a fantastic Dark Matter Wemby, and he's going to be better. Is he going to be a lot better? I mean, his jumper on very quick is going to be great. Attributes, 94 three-pointers, going to be wild. So he's probably the best stretch big in the game with the jumper being so high. Uh, his hop, his post hops, which I saw one person online using it, but at his height, they're very good because they're very, very quick. I don't know what animation it is. Um, what is his post hop? It's Kobe Bryant. Yeah, he has a Kobe post hop. At his height, that post hop is super fast. And, and, like, it's just really hard to get to. And it's a great, great bailout move when someone doesn't have a card who's 7-4. It's like, except for Wilt, Wemby, even Porzingis, is, 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 I don't know if speed-wise he's going to be, be able to get to it. You, you throw that in. If you're playing triple threat, it's going to be one of the best triple threat cards in the game easily, if not the best triple threat center in the game. He, he's definitely going to be up there. Um, Pro 2 leaner, absolutely outstanding. Tim Hardaway combo move should be very good. Luca breakdown is all right. Trey Young behind the back is excellent. So, honestly, with just Michael Jordan dribble style and that Trey Young behind the back, even with the McGrady size up, like that's enough. Penny spin. Luca has he's all right, but just those three moves. The and he's got the KD escape too. Yeah, I mean he's he's going to be a dark matter Wemby. But I will say they didn't go absolutely nuts. They didn't give him like Kemba escape and John Wall blah blah. blah. They're clearly waiting. <laughs> right before making him super ridiculous, but he is going to be very, very good. I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm just saying there's still another level to go. Is he the best center in the game? Uh, well, let's unpack that. So he's a great shooter, still 88 strength. So the thing is, he's got to compete with Wilton Hakeem and even to a lesser degree, Powell. So will he get dogged out by Wilt now the way he would have been dogged out by Wilt before? Maybe. Will he make up for that in other ways? I don't know, because now everybody can shoot, right? So it's, uh, I, I mean, I think he's clearly going to be great. Is he a reason to like rip packs? If you, I mean, the problem is 
none of the great centers have been in packs and none of the great centers still are in packs. Your set, your, your ability to actually, uh, not packs, in the player market, I apologize. So your ability to get a great center is very, very limited in the game. And the only way you can get one if you're not spending a ton of money is if you lock in for one or if you get one from the deluxe pack or the, or the exchange packs. And if that hasn't happened for you, running into this center is going to be an absolute nightmare because he's, he's going to just lay waste to any viable center in the game, including himself, his lesser self, right? So this is other, other Wemby is cell and this is perfect cell. He's going to destroy him. So for my, for my fellow Dragon Ball nerds out there. All right. So you see, Wemby obviously looks fantastic. He's a gambling card. Uh, he's, he's overpowered in many, many ways. And I honestly think it's a little early in the game to be doing this with a Wemby card. Uh, his pink diamond was still running. I don't think they should have put a new Wemby in the game until the pink diamond was outdated completely. And he's the pink diamond is still a top, you know, five ish center in the game at worst. I know some people have him low in the top 10. I still have him top five. So yeah, there you go. Tracy McGrady, 100 overall. We're not going to talk too much. I just want to see what they did. So obviously the stats and a 91 overall, ironically, he doesn't have his own six, which shows you what they think of his six, right? He literally doesn't have his own six. Main thing, T-Mac base on very quick. His upper is not the best upper to go with the T-Mac base, but the T-Mac base is the best base in the game besides the Patty Mills. So, yeah, I mean, best base in the game, Kobe Leaner. It's it's 100 overall T-Mac with juiced six. It, the interesting thing is so we're just doing analysis because who's going to get this card, right? So, really... I'm looking at what they think is the best when I look at this T-Mac, you know, and, and it doesn't mean that they, they think this is literally the best in every category, but they think that these are some of the best things in the game. This is what they're going to think that almost everything in here is S tier. Very interesting. Very, very interesting is where they chose to nerf him. And here they chose to nerf him in the move in the moving behind the back, the pro behind the back. It's solid. If you put out any card with the Jamal Murray behind the back, the Jamal Murray is so powerful of a move that if everything else is the same and your stats are a little bit worse and your, you know, your jumper still has to be good, but like your body type's a little bit worse, but you have the Jamal Murray, you can make up ground with Jamal Murray. And for that reason, I look at him, I'm actually curious about him versus Ron as we get ready to wrap up this breakdown. Come on, 2K DB, I'm making a video. But yeah, I mean, he looks obviously great. These are these are elite in every single category. There's no reason to beat it into the ground. He's 100 overall. You obviously expect him to be elite in every single category. So when we look at the badges, shot I, I mean, the, the stats, shot IQ is significant. Um, standing dunk is the big one. And then a lot of it is in post moves, right? Everything else is like one here, two there, three there. Do we think he's going to defend better than a Ron Artest card? That's an honest question. You know, not sure about it. He is 6'8 with a 7'2 wingspan. So he's a much taller player in terms of getting a shot off. I'm not trying to make the case that one is better than the other. I'm literally just analyzing what they did and what's going on. Everything here is a wash, basically. Another thing, they always, like 2KDB says pro behind the back, but I have to test this out. I don't think it's always pro behind the back because sometimes I, I use the pro behind the back and it looks amazing. And sometimes it doesn't look super great. I don't know what's going on with that. I have to double check. I have to look at every single card that has pro behind the back. and see if the animation is always the same because I remember there was a card. I think it was Mitch Richmond that had pro behind the back. And I went to put that on a, my career character and it was completely different. So I'm not sure that pro moving behind the back is always pro moving behind the back. We have to take a look at that. That haven't been said. Uh, yeah, from a, from a animation standpoint, these these are very very equivalent cards, like very equivalent cards. So, you know, he has McGrady base, but he has that McGrady upper. I have to see how that plays, but he's probably fantastic. I mean, Leaner's their equivalent, Hop Jumper. Uh, actually, Ron might have the better Hop Jumper. I have to look at that pro too. So yeah, is Mc, is McGrady going to be the best two guard in the game? Maybe I don't know. Um, Ron is, Ron is just super, super duper excellent. So I have to actually 
see the card and play with the card. But he's 100 overall. And nobody's going to get him, so it doesn't matter. But I just find it interesting that they're still body blocking on that Jamal Murray if this is his actual behind the back because 2K DB is great, but it's not always 100% accurate. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this very long breakdown video. I hope you enjoyed going through this set. The one thing I will say to wrap this up, I don't think I looked at an outright bad card today. I think every card in this drop is the very is at the very least usable. And I think the worst card, at least my least favorite, I can't call him the worst card, but my least favorite for the investment is probably this Bradley Beal. I think every other card, these are cards you can pick up. So they're, you know, it's just a bit of MT. Play some games and you can get it. Here, if you lock in all of this MT and you wind up with the Boo Boo prize, that pour one out. Pour one out. Because I think he's probably significantly worse than everybody else in this collection. All right, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much, as always, for liking the, for, for rocking with the channel. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I appreciate your support as always. I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.